when I saw the trailer, I was like always, you know, oh, this is where I died. Oh, this is this. <laughs> and you exactly know what's what must be around the corner and, you know, the locations and, and stuff. But what I also, you know, enjoy from the trailers is the fact that even if you know the games so well, it feels like that the, the story is like uh, unpredictable, even for the fans, because, for example, we get to see in the new trailer, we get to see your character, Chris, uh, meet William Birkin, which is something that never happened in Resident Evil 2 in the game. So it's very yeah. exciting for, for, for those it's, that haven't seen it as well. I think that uh, Johannes Roberts, who wrote it and, and directed it, you know, he really did such a great job of adapting Resident Evil 1 and 2 and giving the fans what they want to see. Well, also, you know, taking some liberties that you need to with the movie to form that connective tissue and the heart of the movie and build these relationships between these characters. Because, you know, the movies they ha or the games, they have a couple cutscenes, but there's not a lot of interactions between these characters. So you have to, he really, I think he did a great job of finding those connections and those, those building those relationships so that the rest of the movie means more. Right. And let's let's go back to you know where it all started because you are thirty three years old. I am thirty three years old, so I exactly know how it feels like to grow up with, with Resident Evil, and I know it it feels great. But oh yeah, I do remember how tricky it was to convince my parents to allow me to play those games, and I was able to convince them after days of crying. But I was wondering how has it been for you? How challenging was it to convince your household to let you play these games? You know, it was, uh, my mom and dad both worked. So I feel like anything to keep me busy was like pretty good. It was like hockey, video games. Like that was, that right. was pretty much it. And, um, you know, my, my, my parents gave me a pretty long leash from, uh, from a young age about like content that I watched and, and my sister and I were, were pretty good about not misusing that and uh and right. and getting ourselves into trouble so um i was okay one of my earliest like video game memories is sitting in the basement lights off playing resident evil and the dogs jumping through the window and just scaring the crap out of me right <laughs> exactly yes and it felt so good <laughs> oh it was amazing i i went back and played resident evil one and and resident evil 2 remastered when i booked the movie just because i was like let me let me see this again and the controls in Resident Evil 1 are terrible. <laughs> I was like totally struggling with the controls, but it was a different time. And then um, it was amazing to get on set and walk into like the mansion and it be right out of the video game. Johannes went to Capcom and asked for the blueprints for the mansion and for the um, police station. And he made them like he wanted it to be oh, so wow. accurate and he just killed it. And, you know, I think that fans of the game are going to lose their minds. And I think people who haven't played the games, they still know what Resident Evil is because of the, you know, pop culture side of things. But oh yeah. Even even without it, I mean it's it's a very fun, very cool 90s zombie movie. The music's great. It moves fast, but it's surprisingly horror. Like it's it's yeah. it's scarier than the first the first set of movies, which I love. My buddy is is in the Mila Jovovich ones. His name's Sean Roberts. He plays Wesker. He's such a great oh, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm a big, I'm a big fan of those movies. Um, and and ours is ours is just different. It's just you know, it's more based off the games. Um, it's a little less sci-fi action movie and a little more horror movie. But I mean, I think they can they can exist at the same time. You know, it. it I'm yeah. pumped about it. Yeah, absolutely, definitely. No, no, I also grew up with, you know, watching the first Resident Evil movie on the big screen was also something that was hard convincing my parents. You know? <laughs> and that was the, the one time I lost. I was like, you let me play the games four years ago, but you don't let me see the movie right now. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but do you still play the old games sometimes? I literally shot the, a, a thing for Twitch the other day and I, uh, I was playing Resident Evil 1 and 2 with, uh, with another streamer just messing around. And, oh, uh, it was cool. great. It was super cool. I mean, the remastered is definitely easier to play just because it's the graphics update and everything. I, I'm a sucker <laughs> for, you know, it's cool for nostalgia to go back to Resident Evil 1, but like uh. it's old. It's, you know, it's a 1996 video game. The game <laughs> is more than 20 years old. So it's, you know, it's uh, more than 25 years old now, but it's like, uh, 
it was cool. It was, it was fun to get back in there. It was really cool to see how similar it is to the movie. Like the sets are unbelievable. There's moments that are taken right out of both games and there's a ton of Easter eggs. Like there's a scene I'm shooting in the movie in this laboratory and there's a green, a red and a blue herb behind me. And it's never, they're not used. They're not talked about. They're just on the wall because they know that, you know, anybody that played the game is just going to be like, Oh, sh oh li of course. Yes. Goosebumps yeah. right away. <laughs> exactly. It's super cool. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. No, but um, it's so fun. What you just said, you know, because when Resident Evil 2, the game came out, I, you know, I, I played old games like pretty much every year. So I, I kind of never allowed my brain to see them as old games in a way. But I remember like, you know, my friend came over to play the game Resident Evil 2 because when the remake came out, he was like, oh, I, I want to play the old one as well. And, but you know, like minutes in, he was like, oh, I can't do this. I, I can't do it. <laughs> and you know, he was so disappointed that he, that he no longer enjoys what he once loved. And I oh, was disappointed funny. because he was disappointed, you know? <laughs> so. I played, um, the, one of my favorite games growing up was Diablo 2. And they just yeah. came out with Diablo 2 Resurrected and I was playing it. And then I tried to go back to like the old graphics, same game, completely same game, old graphics. And it was like, you're, it was broken and like i'm looking at it i'm like i can't do this like it's, <laughs> it is night and day the different and i'm like i was totally totally fine playing it before but now that i've experienced the new one i was totally i was too spoiled right now robbie i would like to ask you some questions that only a fan will probably understand sure and, uh, we know that you are a fan of course um first of all what i love about you know uh the games is, of course, you always go back and forth and you collect items, you put them together and you try to open the door you want to enter. Um, and I was wondering if this is something that you can relate to as an actor, you know, how much back and forth was necessary at the beginning of your career until you were finally able to put the pieces together that allowed you to open the door to your goal? I mean, I think I'm still trying to put those pieces together. I think the nice thing is when when i first started out um I, i i didn't grow up an actor like i i grew up playing hockey and right. i just kind of fell into acting so i was really learning the business from all sides when i first started and that was like onset offset the business ins and outs the creative ins and outs um and i didn't know you know, I didn't know what my strong suits were. I didn't know what my weak points were. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just knew that I wanted to do it. And I, I, I've had a lot of fun finding my way. Um, I think that one thing I can, I can, I've learned is if you're going to do a project, you should have a reason for it. And if that reason's money, that's fine. Just know that that's the reason. Luckily, I haven't had to do that project yet, but I'm sure it's out there. <laughs> I'm sure it'll happen. It happens to everyone. But in, you know, up until this point, I've been able to look at projects and say, I want to work with that director, or I really love this script, or I really love that character, or I really love, you know, the other actors involved in this. And um, I've been really lucky to get to work with great people and work on great projects and For better or for worse, you know, some of them are great. Some of them are okay. Some of them aren't great. But making a movie is really hard. And I learn something new every time I do it. And I'm really excited to continue doing it. But that's a great thing. Even though you 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 make some movies that you are less less proud of, it doesn't mean that you have to regret the experience because every experience is is precious in a way. Absolutely. You know, it, it doesn't have to be a great movie for you to have a great time doing it or to walk away from it with relationships mm -hmm. or walking walk away from it having learned lessons. Um, it's everything's been pretty exciting for me. And, 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 and at the same time, I've, there's this great book called Acting in Film by Michael Caine. And uh, somebody asked him, like, why'd you do that movie about like early on his career? Like, why would you do that movie? And he was like, because I booked it. He's like, I, I was excited to do any movie. He's like, you know, when you start, you're just trying to find what that thing is. And like making a movie has so many moving parts, M movie, television, whatever. You always want it to be good, but a lot of things are out of your control. So you control what you can, you do as good a job you can. And then 
you kind of have to let it go because some of them will be successful. Some of them won't, some of them will be good. Some of them won't, but it's a pretty fun job. So I'm okay. Right. With it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. And what about, because in the games, whenever you open a door, you go like, oh, finally, but what usually awaits you behind it is usually three other closed doors. Yeah. So you've got to have, to go back and forth again in order to find the keys that take you to those doors. And it's the same thing when you are chasing uh, uh, dreams in reality. Whenever you are finally able to open the door, you, you were fighting so hard to open that door. But yes, of course, after, after when you open it, what awaits you there is your goal, but also another closed doors. So I was wondering how yeah. did you make sure so far that whenever you open a door, you don't get stuck yourself, you know, in your own gameplay called life? How did you make sure that you find those keys that take you to the next chapter and section of your life? I think you have to make sure that you're not like, you can't just blow past that first door. Like when you open it, you know, that was the goal. So you have to be proud of yourself and, 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 you know, enjoy that goal for a minute, even though that goal leads to something else. You know, I think you have to make sure that before you got that, that was what you wanted. So you have to give yourself a little credit before you move on to the next one. And, you know, I look back and, and I miss, you know, some of the times when I first got to LA and I was auditioning for everything and it was just kind of like, I need to book something. I need to book something. I need to book something. And yeah, you know, some of those things like, um, for instance, I remember the first time I booked, um, like a big network TV show was, uh, uh I, I did a couple episodes on a show called Alcatraz, which was from the creators of lost and like had really great people involved. And it was a big budget Fox show. And like, I wanted that so bad and I got it and I got to play the young version of an actor who I absolutely loved. Uh, and it was just yeah. like a really cool, fun experience for me. And that led to something else. And then that led to something else. And, you know, looking back at it, as far as the broad strokes of my career, that's not a big moment. It's not something that people will know me for. It's not something that will make me famous or rich or, you know, successful, but it was a stepping stone or a door to be open to lead to more of them. So they're all exciting, some more so than others. But uh, I think it's all about, you know, just kind of trying to appreciate what you have while still trying to, to better yourself and find something, something more. Absolutely. You put that very well. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Seriously. Uh, and what, what about, you know, what's, what, what was so cool or frustrating, depending on who played the games, uh, was that uh, you actually had to collect ink ribbons in order to be able to save. I know, to save. <laughs> yes. And uh, of course, sometimes you were like, damn, I can't save the game because I, I, I don't have any, you know, so you had actually to risk to play a huge chapter hoping that William would find rest, one. Yes. And hoping that you don't get killed so that you go <laughs> all the way back to where you started without saving. And I was wondering um, if you ever, uh, what would you say has been like the biggest risk that you had to take in your life so far without having the opportunity first to save all your previous achievements? Um, before my friend Jeff Chan and I uh, made our short film for Code Eight, uh, if I could have, if I could save before I did that, I would have, just because we were spending seventy thousand dollars of our own money. Oh, wow! And yeah. Yeah. the chances of us making that money back were probably slim, but if we weren't willing to bet on ourselves, then why would we, why should we expect anyone to bet on us? So we put up our own money. We made the short film and, you know, two and a half years later, we were on set shooting the movie. And now I'm literally in production on the sequel and it's a big, you know, full Netflix movie. So, um, so it was worth it. 
Oh, it's it was 100% it worth it. Yeah. <laughs> but you never know. Like those are the Always. those are the risks where I never would have regretted it if we if it didn't work out and I never, you know, made the money back and I never got anything out of it. It was a risk that I was, you know, I would have I would have regretted not taking the risk. I wouldn't regret taking the risk. Right, because you don't want to look back and and tell yourself, well, what if what we if done it? You know, yeah, yeah, exactly. And now you've come so far with it. That's that's awesome. Seriously, <laughs> it's fun. It's really fun. It's you know, we're the sequel's going great. It's bigger. It's badder. It's it's Ooh. awesome. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> so excited for that one as well. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'd like to go back to the to to the safe room. Uh, you know, sometimes I didn't just enter the safe room because I wanted to save the game, but just because I wanted to have a break from all the horror outside. You know, it was like, oh yeah, you just it. need a breather. I, yes, I was like, okay, just breathe, and I'll try to figure out in here uh, how I get you know across the room where there's you know a bunch of liquors. Um, so, and I was wondering. What would you say is your safe room in life? You know, where where do you usually go if you want to just have a break from everything? Um, I have a couple. One is just hanging out with my wife and my son. Um, but that's a different kind of break because my my son's two, so he's a handful anyway. Sometimes I need a break <laughs> from, from a two-year-old. Um, so my, my two different things would be, um, you know, with my wife and son, um, or hanging with my family, or the third one would be gol uh, on the golf course with my dad or with with a couple buddies because that's where I can just kind of shut most things out and and right. and just just play some golf. Awesome. And what about um, you know? I just remembered that. Of course, you remember as well, you know, when when uh, in the 90s, in the early 2000s, uh, there were like magazines with cheat codes and, and CDs where you were able to, you know, cheat and stuff. And I remember, you know, having used one of them. And then I was like, no, no, no. If it's not my achievement, I will not be satisfied. I just have to stop right now. And so Do you remember the game Turok Dinosaur Hunter? Oh, yeah. Yes. I, I used cheats in that game. And I think I only played it for an hour. Like it was the game. It was, I remember very distinctly playing the game. I found it was too hard. I used cheat codes, put on like God mode. I had unlimited ammo, all the guns and you could just mow everything down. And I was bored in an hour and like it totally ruined the game for me. It's not challenge anymore, right? It's just a walkthrough. You got to earn it. Yeah, exactly. Because when you don't use cheat codes and then you make it, you are like, You just the, the celebration mode you have is like oh just you're I just agree. so proud of you, right? <laughs> But I was wondering because whenever we try to achieve things in life, it can be so hard. And I was wondering if if you ever reached the point in your career or your life where you kind of wish you would have had the cheat code just in a just in, just so you can kind of cheat yourself to the place you want to be. Um, I mean, the difficult answer is. Yes, for sure. And if you have them in life, you would definitely use them. But I think, I think in almost every scenario, you would regret it. But oh, yeah. I just think, you know, it's, it's kind of that thing where if everything's handed to you and you don't really have to work for it, you're probably not going to appreciate it. You're going to either blow it up or you're going to use it too fast, or it's probably just going to eat away at you because you didn't have to do anything to get it. With that being said, there's definitely times in, in everybody's life where it would be really nice to be able to have some kind of cheat code or reset or something, you know, but I think that for the most part, people at first thought, people would be like, oh, I would use it to get rich or I would use it for this or I'd use it for this. But I think at the end of the yeah. day, most people would use it for the right reasons, which would be like to protect the people they love or to you know uh, for things that are things that are real real bad and real real problems like you know sickness and things totally. like that where you go yeah cheat code's pretty worth it here i don't think i'll ever regret this exactly yeah, yeah absolutely 100 agree uh my introduction was actually do you remember like these old old toys from the 90s like oh man That's awesome. Do you remember those? 
Yeah, I've never seen one in person. Well, not in person, but like not on like a just a picture on the internet. Oh, right. All right. I can't believe you still. Have, is that yours from when you were a kid or did you buy that as an adult? I, I still have them from when I was a kid, but these were unboxed. So I got them again. So I was able to keep them in. You know. I was going to say, if you if you were able to keep them unboxed, like or keep them boxed, that would be unbelievable. But that makes more sense. At least you enjoyed them when you were a kid. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so Robbie, um, the, 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 w- one of the iconic things is also from the games is that, um, of course, you have the item box and your limited inventory. And uh, sometimes you go like, yes, I found this piece that I need. And then you go like, no, why do I have three blue flowers that I can get rid of? Because there's no creature around that can poison me right now. So I was wondering if when you started off, um, when you started chasing your dreams, what, because we all have to leave stuff behind when we, when we chase our dreams. And I was wondering, what are the things um, you wish you would have taken with you? And what are the things you hate you had to leave behind in a way. Um, I, it's funny. There's a, when I moved to LA at the time, it just felt like I was going to LA to like, it didn't feel like I was moving to LA. It felt like I was like going somewhere for, for a trip. Do you know what I mean? Like it, you know, like when somebody goes to school, if you travel, you know, if say you're in Toronto, but you go to school in PEI, you don't feel like you're moving to PEI, you're going to school there. So I, I moved straight to LA out of high school. And it kind of felt like I was going to school, even though it wasn't for school, it was for work. It just, that was kind of the way it felt to me. Um, so it didn't occur to me at the time that it was like such a permanent move. And the things that I lost from that were um, just time with friends and family. Like I wish that I could have done everything I did still in Toronto, minus right. the weather, uh, like the Southern California <laughs> weather. I'm a real sucker for the, for the sun. Now I've become a real wimp when it comes to, uh, to the cold, but like just little things like that, where, you know, I love LA and I love the friends that I've made there and, and the family that I've, I've, I have there, but you know, my mom and dad were in Toronto and I would only see them, you know, a handful of times per year and all my friends that I grew up playing hockey with and stuff like that. You know, I only see, I would only see them a couple times a year, like, you know, once in the summer and once at Christmas sort of thing. So that was one thing where I would have liked to have been able to, to, hold on to a little more, but I don't think that's necessarily just because I would have stayed in Toronto doesn't mean I would have, you know, stayed in really close with all of the friends that I was close with, you know, in high school, because people, people grow up and people do their own thing and people find their own way. So it's, it's easy to look back and think that it was because of one reason, but it's, it's not necessarily true. The family side of things, you know, uh, that's a little, a little more of like, I know that my mom and dad and my sister would have been more involved in my life just from a day-to-day standpoint, if I didn't live, you know, on the other side of, of, of the country or like of the U S. Um, right. but with that being said, I have an amazing relationship with all of them. We always faced, well, once FaceTime became a, a thing, you know, there was a lot of phone calls and uh, they would come visit me and I would come home and visit them. So it was, it, it, the, it's not a big downside. It's just a little bit of a like, yeah, that would have been nicer. But it makes each moment even more precious, right? Even w- w- whenever you have them on a face call or whenever you see them again. For sure. Yeah. You know, it's funny how, how that works sometimes is sometimes when you live in the same place, you don't you take, you take it for granted. So you don't even, you know, you don't have as much contact. Right. What I also love about the games is the fact that the, 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 the final boss is all always introduced very early on in the games. You know, it's not like in this level, it's this one in this level, it's this, it's this one. So you, so Mr. X and William Burke, and they already hunt you down very early on. And I was wondering, what would you say? And they are always trying to, uh, 
bring you off your journey. And I was wondering, what would you say has been like the final boss you had to beat in your life, you know, that kind of hold you back from, from your journey? Um, I don't know. I don't know yet. Um, I just, I think I, I like to think I'm still pretty early on in, in what I'm doing. You know, I've, uh, I've been lucky and I've had a lot of success, but, um, you know, I haven't, I haven't found that thing and I haven't, I'm, I've been really lucky that my parents were very supportive of me, even at a young age to move to LA and, and give it a shot. So I didn't have things that were, there was nothing really holding me back. It was just trying to earn that, that shot and, and, and get a chance. And, um, now I think, uh, I've been really lucky that the people I've worked with have continued to, to, you know, show me more work, which, uh, which, uh, you know, I just think is, is something that's really nice. You get to continue working with the same, same people. And, um, that means a lot to me. All right. And uh, Robbie, my last question to you would be uh, because Johannes, which is very exciting, he already said that he could totally imagine the sequel to be based on Code Veronica, and uh, which is which would be so amazing because, of course, we had ne we've never seen Alexi Ashford before, and uh, and Nosferatu and all the, all the characters. I was wondering what your opinion is on that, and and because Chris is of course a very important character in this game, and and if you since Johannes and you are both huge fans if you ever discussed the possibility of of uh, you know adapting code veronica actually he never mentioned that to me so that's super oh. cool yeah no that's really fun i'm going to text him about it uh right now um right. i mean he's the guy he's he is the right guy for the job you can tell he's passionate about it you can tell he cares about it and and i just You know, I'd follow him into into any Resident Evil uh, adaptation. I'm uh, he's my guy. Oh, that's wonderful, Robbie. Seriously, I cannot wait to see the movie, which will be in five minutes from now. So, oh, man. <laughs> very excited to see it. Seriously, Sweet. and I'm and excited for you to see it. Yes, and uh, we will chat tomorrow again. And uh, seriously, Perfect. thank you so much for it, for your time. It's such a pleasure we were able to 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 make this happen. Seriously, it's so cool talking to you. Me too. Um, Great talking to you too. Enjoy the movie. Bye. Thank you.